Lasers could be about to transform the way the military communicates in the battle space. To Romeo, this is 8 Uniform Hotel. Clear, reliable and secure comms are crucial to battlefield success, keeping commanders and those they command in close contact. But radio signals, a mainstay of military communications for over 100 years, can be jammed or intercepted, with radio silence the only surefire way to avoid being detected. Q, a secure optical communication tool that could be about to change that. These new systems don't use radio signals but laser light instead. And it's promising to do for military communications what fibre optics have done for broadband. Laser light can be used to encode data to create high-speed communication that is transmitted wirelessly, offering greater bandwidth and security than radio waves. The moment I you know, push that radio down, it's a big hello, here is a battalion command. This is just free space, a very narrow beam that only transmits from on a very narrow path from the transmitter to the receiver. When you push that button, there are only two people that will know there's a there's communication going on. It is uh, in a non-visible spectrum, so you cannot see that either from the other side. And you wanna, if you want to jam it, yeah, then you have to physically go in and, uh, and block it. So in that sense, it's, it's very secure. In the top of that, we do see uh, advanced in uh, quantum encryption that will exactly go on, on top of this technology here, you know, spinning each photon in the right way in a special sequence, coding each photon. So if you catch the photon, you don't know how uh, to uh, as a understand what is the, is, is the concept of the photon. NATO is already considering the new technology, testing it out on a recent naval exercise off the coast of Portugal. Rempis 25 tried out the latest unmanned technology and how it can be used in maritime security. But the exercise also saw the Portuguese Navy use the Polaris system to maintain an undetected jam-proof laser-based link between two of its ships. To go out there and you book, you get to test your stuff, right? As you, you can do many, many things in the lab, you can do from different towers and so on, right? But when you get out there and, and with water, with salt and so on, you, you really get to test the things and really appreciate those, those exercises. So the things which we were concerned about went above expectations, but of course new challenges emerged. It was amazing to experience also the operators as of how they have jaw dropping, saying, okay, now we can actually, uh, you know, stream Netflix from, from the neighboring ship, right? Or in this case here, it would be real-time video from a drone or something like that from a neighboring unit. So we really were successful on that exercise. And then at the, the month after, we went to uh, Latvia for NATO Dibex, uh, the Diggers of Backbone uh, exercise for uh, ground to ground uh, exercise as a demonstration where we uh, demonstrated how this was used in a, in a ground segment, uh, connecting yeah, two command stations together, having their units for connecting with those really having um, unjammable, undetectable gigabit communication between those, uh, those two uh, systems. It's no coincidence that it's a firm based in the Baltics that's developing this technology. With NATO's biggest current security threat nearby and the war in Ukraine showing the need to stay ahead in this area of warfare. Being a Baltic Sea company, a neighbour that has very, very strong, maybe superior capabilities to, to NATO in electronic warfare, we see in the Russian-Ukraine war how much electronic warfare matters for your capabilities as a your strategic foundation and how much counter EV matters to be able to, you know, that weapon race that is between electronic warfare and counter electronic warfare. So for us, this was the as the need to find something that could move NATO in front of the game again. The company is now building an optical ground station in Greenland to enhance the security of ground communications. It means a lot for as a, both resilience but also robustness. So the, the idea of uh, establishing a position in Greenland came from our experience with NATO Diana being placed in the accelerator in Copenhagen. And there we saw that uh, as in 2022, there was a um, attempt, a uh, partially successful attempt to damage the, the fiber cable that goes from, from Svalbard, north of Norway, down to the mainland, which really gives the, the reason why Svalbard is a significant global infrastructure location. It's very far off and has a fiber cable. Um, and we kind of saw that yeah, we need to spread out uh, our global space infrastructure because yeah, there are foreign nations that are buying for some reason land, maybe for climate change, I don't know, agriculture reasons. Uh, but there is also an uh, eager attempt to uh, to break uh, the, the fiber cable infrastructure that connects uh, Svalbard with uh, Norway. So we really saw that, that Greenland could place an uh, important role in creating redundancy and robustness for, uh, for NATO and, and Europe. For more than a century, 
Radios have been an important means of communications between personnel deployed in the field. But times have changed, and the means to intercept them have developed over the decades. Now the answer to this issue just might have presented itself. David Civils McCann, BFBS Forces News. Thanks for watching. For more from BFBS Forces News, like and subscribe to our channel.